So what if we have the opposite situation? What if our numerators are all the same, but our denominators are all different? Well, in this case, you can see that the shading is greatest on one half. One half is the largest fraction. One eighth is the smallest fraction, even though eight is the biggest number. Let's look at that on a fraction circle. Here I have one half shaded. Notice, as my fraction changes from one half to one third, that less is shaded. And the same as I move to fourth, six, and eight. The denominator grows, the amount shaded is smaller. Let's look at an example. Here I have two fraction strips, both separated into equal size parts. But the top one is six equal size parts, and the bottom one is eight equal size parts. And then they both have four pieces shaded. Notice that the six is bigger than the eight. And four of those six is greater than four of those eights. Let's look at one more example. Three fraction circles separated into different amounts of equal size parts. Three parts of each are shaded. If you look at the three-fourths circle, one-fourth does appear to be bigger than one-sixth, which appears to be bigger than one-eighth. So three of those fourths is more than three of the six is more than three of the eights. Fun fact, in case I offer you three-fourths or three-eighths of my cookie. So what did we learn here about comparing fractions? When the denominators are different, but the numerators are the same. When the numerators are the same, we want to check the denominators. The smaller denominator is going to be the larger fraction. Okay, now you try. 